All right, I think we're ready. I'd like to welcome you all here tonight and those of you that may be watching, and we'll uh, uh, start the meeting in just a moment. But before we begin, I'd like to invite you to stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, and then Amelia Williams will bring the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you, Amelia. All right. I'd like to again welcome everyone to the this regular meeting of the Springdale City Council. This is Tuesday, April 28th, 2020. Uh, we'll start by asking our city clerk to call the roll. Mayor Sprouse. Here. Amelia Williams. Here. Jeff Watson. Here. Mike Overton. Here. Mike Lawson. Here. Rick Evans. Here. Brian Powell. Here. Kathy Jaycox. Here. Ernest Kate. Here. All right, thank you. Uh, this is the uh, portion of each meeting that the council sets aside to hear comments from our citizens. Uh, is, do we have anyone in person? We'll start there and then. <coughs> Melinda, let me remind you, uh, these are for comments that aren't dealing with any issue that's before the council tonight. We've, Correct. Okay. All right. We'll go, go right ahead. Need your name and address, though. Can y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. okay. I'm Melinda Mason. I live at 106 West Allen, the corner northeast corner of Allen and Main, right downtown from the ACO, the Heart Center. I'll bet, like me... When you were learning to drive, your parents said, keep your eyes on the road. They did not mean exclusively the paved surface. They meant the whole of traffic, right? Stay with me, I know the bike lanes are coming out. Mm -hmm. I was coming tonight initially to say that this 12-month trial, and that's an appropriate word, has morphed into the beginning of an 18-month period, and I was heartened to read in the paper last week that the bike lanes are coming out. Well, the, the, technically, the, the zebras are coming out. Yeah, the okay. zebras and the bollards. The bollards. Those are the white oh, posts. Oh, yeah, I think so. The Brad. fancy name yeah. for the white posts. Yeah. It's been a year now that we've been forced to endure the clutter, the inconvenience of squeezing by and swerving that's been required, the interference with traffic flow, the confusion, and the constant complaints. Those white posts <coughs> are battered and scuffed and I noticed a new one broken this week. I live right around the corner, a half block from Holcomb and one block from Maple. So I deal with this every day. Each scuff mark on those posts represents scrape damage to someone's car's paint finish. I've witnessed Station One's trucks coming out the back way to turn onto Holcomb and scraping them. Three things need to happen immediately. We need to bring back the left turn lane for traffic turning left, that's south, at Pleasant and Maple by the library. When I have come down there and the high school has let out, the traffic is backed up all the way down Kansas and from Kansas and beyond to the library because there is no left turn lane there now. And everyone is waiting many minutes to turn left onto Pleasant or behind people waiting to turn left onto Pleasant. That needs to come back. At 
at the hospital and Maple. That pavement, ever since they put the bike, the zebras and the bollards in, the pavement striping is streaked, it's smeared, it's overlapping. It's really difficult for drivers to discern what's where. I've been in the Jones Clinic with my mother and people have from Rogers and other places have said, we just dread coming up here to the doctor. We can't tell what's what and we can't, we're just trying our best to figure out how to get in to the parking garage after turning we, on. We probably should have held you until, until we are addressing this issue. Well, I've just got a bit more. Okay. Adding the bike lane in front of the Pontiac slash whatever pizza place it is today, I've seen the ambulances lose precious seconds creeping around that narrowed corner to get to the emergency entrance. At the light at Maple in 71, I'm the only one that I ever know of that stops at what I call the step back, where they have drawn the white line back away when waiting for the left turn arrow. And not parking at the step back keeps the ambulances creeping around the corner and any other traffic that's turning off of 71 east onto Maple. They're having to pull way out around the front of the cars and then swerve back in to avoid falling into the lane. Because I live downtown, People think I know stuff, and I do try my best to pay attention. I am asked constantly, why are there cars parked out in the middle of Holcomb? On Holcomb between Meadow and Allen, the cars need to be parked at the curb, not nine feet out, and yes, I have measured it. If you turn south onto Holcomb from Meadow, or you come south on Holcomb from Emma at Meadow, those green stock tanks and white posts and the white road markings are a stumper, especially after dark. Try it if you're not regularly in that area after dark. It's like, what is this? What am I supposed to do? And I would like to challenge us to just rethink and take a deep breath before we immediately install reflectors. Let's just see if there's the volume of cyclists that even warrant that. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Was there anybody else? Officers? Okay. Anyone? Uh, I don't know, Mark, is anybody joining us by phone or Zoom that would for the, for the public comment? All right, then we'll move on. The approval of minutes. Uh, council, if there are no changes or additions, I'd entertain a motion to approve them as presented. So moved. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. What's your pleasure on procedural motions? Move for A and B. Okay, we have a motion and a second for A and B. Roll call, please. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Powell? Yes. Jay Cox? Yes. Carry seven zero. All right. Item seven, Planning Commission Report and Recommendations. Patsy Christie, Director of Planning and Community Development. Patsy? The first item is a rezoning request for 66 acres located at 1641 Butterfield Coach. The uh, applicant came in and asked for a C1 zone during the discussion at the Planning Commission meeting. He agreed to downgrade it to a neighborhood office district, 01. Planning Commission recommends approval of the 01 district. The title of the ordinance reads, an ordinance amending ordinance number 3307, the same being the zoning ordinance of the City of Spring to Arkansas on the plat pertaining thereto, by rezoning certain lands from Agricultural District A1 to Neighborhood Commercial District C1, downgraded to Neighborhood Office District 01, and declaring an emergency. Move the ordinance to pass. Okay, we've got a motion a second. Any further comments or questions? <coughs> Anyone in the, in the building or? Okay. All right. Uh, roll call, please. Watson? Yes. 
Overton? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Powell? Yes. Jay Cox? Yes. Williams? Yes. Move the merge clause be adopted. Overton? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Powell? Yes. Jay Cox? Yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Both the ordinance and emergency clause carry 7 0. And as usual, the emergency clause is included because there are pending uh, actions to be taken on this piece of property. The second one is a request to rezone 3.81 acres at 1509 Southwest End Street. The request is to uh, rezone it from medium density multifamily residential district MF12 to medium high density multifamily residential MF16. Uh, this is the piece of property that's behind the existing uh, apartments that are there. It's a little bit higher density than what the uh, front part is that was built many, many years ago. Uh, they will have their two access points, and quite honestly, we're gaining some extra open space for both portions of it. The swimming pool there's, that's there will be taken out. There will be a bigger play area, and they meet the multifamily design standards for open space with uh, the upgrade to an MF-16. Planning Commission recommends approval of this rezoning request. The title of the ordinance reads, an ordinance amending ordinance number 3307, the same being the zoning ordinance of the City of Springdale, Arkansas, and the plat pertaining thereto by rezoning certain lands from medium density multifamily residential district MF12 to medium high density multifamily residential district MF16 and declaring an emergency. Move the order to pass. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the ordinance. Any further comment or questions? MF 16 in you know, multifamily 16 in that area I think that we just rezoned property to the north of that to be MF 16 um, closer to the highway closer to the highway yeah this backs up to another apartment complex it doesn't back it up to any residential it's kind of wedged in there between other apartment complexes so upgrading it to a 16 doesn't appear to create a problem and they can meet the open space requirements of our multifamily design standards Any other questions? Well, if anybody got any calls about the fence being down, it is being put back up as a condition of their large scale that fence that's out there that was in bad state of repair is being repaired too. So. Is there anyone attending remotely that needs to speak to this issue? <clears throat> West side of the property you're talking about? Uh, or east, oh, I mean, east side? No. Yeah, and I think it's on either the, on the north side too. Okay. Side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we have somebody who wants to make a comment or ask a question. I'm not hearing anybody. Mark, do we have somebody? All right, we'll move on. I'm not, I'm not hearing anyone. No. Okay, thanks, Mark. All right, roll call. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Powell? Yes. Jay Cox? Yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Will the merge clause be adopted? Evans? Yes, ma'am. Powell? Yes. Jay Cox? Yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Both the ordinance emergency clause carry 7 0. The next item is a resolution to approve a conditional use, which is a use unit 44, a mobile vending unit, uh, in the downtown form based code district neighborhood center type one. It's at 106 Main Street. Planning Commission reviewed the request and recommends that it be approved with the following conditions. Designation of parking spaces for use on this site. They were granted a, a variance to not have to have three designated spaces on that site may not operate between the hours of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. The health certificate is required to display the health certificate in a manner visible to customers. No obstruction of pedestrian or motor vehicle traffic flow. No obstruction of traffic signals or regulatory signs. No vending upon a public way. No sound devices that produce a loud and raucous noise in violation of city ordinance or violate any other city ordinances in connection with the <coughs> vending operation. Sites to remain clean and free of paper or refuge of any kind generated from the operation of the business with all trash and debris accumulating within 20 feet of any vending stand to be collected and deposited into a trash container and this is granted for a food truck called the Pitts Meadery and it's to that food truck at that location only. 
We would rather just be adopting. Second. Yeah, we have a motion to second. Further comments or questions? <coughs> We established a food truck court where if you put multiple units in it, there had to be a manager on site. This will be one food truck at this location only. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if anybody wants to do that, then they can do that on some of just one. Right. And they come to right. But if they want to do multiple, then we go through the food truck court aspect of it. It does set up <clears throat> manager and all that kind of stuff. They take care of who goes in and out. Okay. At this time, this is the only one that can go at that location. Okay. Okay. Anyone else need to speak to this? Anyone remotely? Anyone remotely? All right, Denise. Powell? Yes. Jay Cox? Yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Carry 7 0. The next item is a request for a waiver of street improvements, drainage, curbs, guts, and so curbs, gutters, and sidewalks in conjunction with a large-scale development called Pure Springdale, which is the planning and development that's going on at on uh, Dean George Boulevard at Don Tyson Parkway. This would be the extension of it to the west of Dean George Boulevard. They have agreed to donate the right-of-way and asking for the waiver of the street improvements. Planning Commission re reviewed this request and recommends approval of the uh, waiver request, so it would be with option one. A resolution approving a waiver of street improvements, drainage, curbs, gutters, and sidewalks is set forth in ordinance number 3725 to Pure Springdale in connection with L28, L28, L2008, a large scale development. So this is the portion of Long Jean George? Yes, it's the, they don't have as much frontage on, no, this is the portion on Deering, which will become the Don Tyson extension. And it's just to the west of the roundabout. And so building just that portion without doing it would not be a very safe option at this point. And so they're asking for a waiver and they are willing to donate the right of way. So we would not have to acquire it. <coughs> It'll be done with the, with the project. It is one of the projects being funded with federal dollars through the ST B, G, P, A, or whatever all those letters are. Grant, we've been working on this for several years and they changed all the letters, but it's being funded through that. So. That was with option one. Okay. And we got a motion and a second. Any other comments or questions? Anyone? Okay, Denise. Jay Cox. Yes. Williams. Yes. Watson. Yes. Overton? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Powell? Yes. Carry 7 0. The next item is also a request for a waiver of street improvements. This is in conjunction with the uh, multifamily project we just looked at on uh, Weston Street. Uh, Western Street is shown on the master street plan as a minor collector. The right of way has already been dedicated. The street improvements are completed. The sidewalk is there, and they are actually building on the back side of that project. In the past, we haven't we haven't required someone to come in and do any improvements if the curb and gutter and sidewalk were already there. Uh, so, Planning Commission is recommending the approval of this waiver with option one and the title of the resolution reads, a resolution approving a waiver of street improvements, drainage, curbs, gutters, and sidewalks is set forth in ordinance number 3725 to Chris Elder, connection with L2010, a large scale development. Be adopted, option one. Okay, we have a motion and a second to adopt the resolution with option one. What would they have to improve if everything's already there? Well, I'm not sure. Why I, are we waiving I'm, it? I mean, well, I, you'll have to ask engineering because that's one of their comments, but I don't know what they would have to improve. The sidewalk may not be five foot wide. That may be the only thing that's, that's left for them to do is to either add, I don't know how wide it is, but there but is a sidewalk. There's carbon there. gutter, there's mm -hmm. sidewalk. There's drainage, all that stuff is there. Yeah. So there's really nothing. I think there was a question at one time, I don't know if it's this one or the next one, that the street, there was some it's question the about one. the street width. Oh, it's that's the, the next, next one. one. It's the okay. next one. Yeah. Okay. This one, the street is actually the right of way is more, and the actual constructed street is is wider than what you would requ require if they were bringing it up to Master Street Plan standards. There's, so there's really not anything there. But we don't have any requirement for street lighting. 
Um, we do have a requirement for street lights. Now there is a street light at the intersection and it may be less than 350 feet. I don't know. Did y'all look at the street light locations on, on this street? Okay. I, I don't know if they, that would, might be the only thing left. I don't know. Well, are we so waiving it. that if we had that requirement? Well, we're right. We, we are waiving all of the street improvement requirements, which street lights is part of that too. Why wouldn't we look at that before we waive it? Well, because you're the first one that brought it up, mm -hmm. quite honestly. It says street lights and option one, it includes street lights. Yeah, it includes street lights. It, option one includes street yeah, lights. It includes street lights because that's part of the requirements for street improvements. There was nothing mentioned in planning commission or in the engineering comments that indicated that street lights was something that still needed to be addressed that I remember seeing. I it would just be on that one portion? Yeah. We the frontage that they have along there would be the only part that they, and, and technically they're building all in the back. They're not right. changing the drive entrances or anything like that into this property. They are using the existing and there's a loop that's there, so they're not making any changes to the street itself. But what, what makes the requirements come up though? Why, why do they, if they're not improving the lot, why do the requirements come up? Brad, you want to address that? Because that's an engineering comment. I can't, so I don't know. I think it's, I think probably because part, part of the whole property is part of that. You go yeah. all the way out the street right away. Right, it's it's so part of the the entire track, but they're building it like it was. If they were doing it years ago, we would have got it with the first phase. This is the second phase, but that was probably built in the '70s, maybe even earlier than that. And uh, I I can't answer that for you, other than it it comes as an engineering comment. I think there was some, it sounds like there were some technicalities to why a waiver, why engineering wanted a waiver. But I don't know what that was. Well, it looks, it seems like it's because everything else was already improved, but I'm wondering if, you know, especially with all those apartments going in there, if we don't need some additional lighting. That's, that's a possibility. Yeah, I, I can't tell you why the street lights are out there. I know there's one at the intersection of whatever that street is that goes over towards the track. And that may be the only one, but I, quite honestly, I have to drive out there and look because I may drive by them every day and still can't yeah, tell I you where I they wasn't are. aware there were any, but yeah. there may be. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. And it may be impossible to put light in there, but I don't know that either. Yeah, I don't either. I don't know if that was discussed with the developer or not, whether or not the street lights could be installed at the. And sometimes they can't be because it's. Right, it may be yeah. impossible. We, yeah. we should know. know that before we know. waive it. I, c I can't answer that for you. Okay. Well, we got a motion and a second. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> what happens if it's voted down? Well, then I guess we'll have to determine what uh, street improvements will have to do. Well, I mean, again, the, quit, the issue may be that it's impossible could to they put not, lighting in there. Could, they not bring it, could you not bring it back next meeting? We can. When we have more information? We can, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I think we already have the motion pending, though. I made the motion. Yeah. Someone Withdraw wanted to make a motion, they could. Withdraw well, the second. If I'm not mistaken, there's one at the corner of Princeton and West End as it is. They, that's the one that goes back to the, which is right across the street from it. Yeah, I'm I, sorry, I can't hear you. If I'm not mistaken, there's a light at the corner of Princeton and West End, which is right across the street from it. I'm thinking um, the same hear. thing, but I can't, I can't tell you for certain that that, that that would meet the requirement, that it's more than 350 feet to the next one or the distance across there, because I didn't look at it. I mean, the, the project can move forward. They can't occupy the building until we, the buildings until we determine whether or not they have to do any street improvements. So tabling it in a month will not cause a major 
upset. It wouldn't as have long to go back to it wouldn't have to go back to planning commission. Wouldn't necessarily have to. Okay. As long as you guys won't hold up the grading permit till this gets done, we should be fine. Because I think I know all their plans are in. I don't know if the building plans are in yet or not. So, what do we have to do to table it, Ernest? Well, well I can withdraw the second. I can withdraw, withdraw the motion. second and a second. Yep. So I move to table. Okay. I'll. Did you withdraw your motion? Your second. Yep. I move to table it till the next May twelfth. Second. Okay. Got a motion and a second to table. Uh, roll call, please. Williams. Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Powell? Yes. Jaycox? Yes. Seven zeros table to May 12th. Okay. okay. Okay, the next item is another waiver of street improvements. This is in connection with the Mill Street Nursing Center going on on South 48th Street. Uh, Planning Commission recommends approval of this waiver. This uh, 48th Street was built as a, well, let, let me back up and say, the right-of-way was established for a major collector as is shown on the master street plan when this street improvement was done by the city and i think it was done in the late 90s yeah it's been there a while yeah the decision was made not to build it to the full width of a major collector at that time and so the street improvements we're putting in the curb and gutter the sidewalk is all there the drainage is all there there is no street lights because there weren't any requirements for street lights at that time they are asking for a waiver of the street improvements and the planning commission is recommending approval with option <coughs> one title Lee reads a resolution approving a waiver of street improvements drainage curbs gutters and sidewalks to set forth in ordinance number 3725 to mill creek nursing center in connection with l 2013 large-scale development and to answer your question of what they would be required to do, they'd have to take out the existing curb gutter and sidewalk and widen it out to major street straight major collector street standards in order to meet the requirement. And then, then we would just have a small section of it that got widened out. Right. That one I do know about. I don't know about the other one. Okay. Second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any further comments or questions? Which option are you working on? That's with option one. Okay. All right. Anybody remotely? Okay. Denise? Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Powell? Yes. Jaycox? Yes. Williams? Yes. Carry seven zero. All right. Item eight, Street and Capital Improvements Committee by Chairman Rick Evans. Rick? We had a meeting last week, Street and CIP have a, one resolution on the Gen 91 discussion on, on the bike trail, but the resolution is a resolution authorizing the expenditure of funds to acquire a portion of land from Sherman Partners LLC for the Dean's Trail Phase Two project, project number ST1801, and this is for uh, buying a property uh, Compensation $35,781. Okay. Got a motion and a second. Further discussion or questions? Anyone? Okay, Denise. Overton? No. Austin? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Powell? Yes. Jay Cox? Yes. Williams? Watson? Yes. Carry six one. Okay, Rick. And next we have a discussion on the uh, <coughs> modification of the trails, bike trails on Maple and Holkin Avenue. Okay. Uh, chairman of the Trails Committee is here, Chris Weiser. Uh, as Chris is coming, uh, you have a you should have a memo from Brad in your packet. Uh, Kathy is also on the Trails Committee and was at the meeting. This is uh, Chris is going to bring the recommendation of the Trails Committee on this uh, uh, on the the bike lanes on Maple and Holcomb. Uh, I think it struck a good balance, uh, and and so Chris, you can come on forward. And if y'all have read the the recommendations, uh, or if you have any questions on it, we can. We it, there's no action required, but we didn't. We wanted to get your. We, want, we wanted to make sure we had all the input we needed. I, th I think we learned our lesson in, about getting ahead of ourselves and, and 
I think we learned our lesson about getting ahead of ourselves and <clears throat> and uh, uh, possibly putting in some things that that weren't um, favorable to the community. So uh, we've gone back and looked at it. We want to remove the uh, uh, armadillos, zebras. the zebras. Sorry, <laughs> the zebras on Maple Street, it, with the exception of the area of the hospital. Uh, the hospital really likes those. It's traffic calming, and they're they're. Uh, uh, employees feel a lot safer the, with those there, so our recommendation would be to keep them in the hospital area, mark those, mark that area as hospital zone, and then by the high school, I heard the lady's comments earlier, she wants a left turn lane, and I was confused about exactly where that was. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I drive that every day more than once, too. I've never seen traffic back up at that left turn. Mm -hmm myself but, but yeah. I'm not saying it doesn't happen I've just not experienced that so we have a different experience yeah. there in, in our right yeah uh, the other <laughs> we would recommend leaving the uh, the zebras there as well in the school area but maple remove them restripe and and uh, <clears throat> clean up the, uh, the confusion that she brought up as well yeah and I think uh, let me make sure we're on the same page here because that's not what I understood Brad was that the school we were talking about was the one on Holcomb you are right yeah the the I'm zebras sorry. on maple would come up yes yeah by the high school by the high school yeah and then we would leave us just a, sm a small <coughs> area of zebras in front of the school at Holcomb with again signage school zone signage uh, because they also like the you know we've, we've cut about several feet off that crosswalk and it's made it much safer for those kids and parents in that crosswalk and that's the same that's the same feedback we've gotten from the hospital mm -hmm. so we would leave them in those areas at least for the time being and see how that works the rest of them where the zebras come up we would uh, Brad's uh, uh, guys would put down uh, reflectors so they could easily be driven over they may you may feel them a little bit but they're the same reflectors I think is what you're putting on the curb at at Tyson and then we'd also grind up the stripes that aren't the striping the center line that's not always that's the old one that's not in the center anymore and we would redo that and that's that would be a pretty easy fix and uh, and get those zebras which are most objectionable <coughs> out out of there Mollards. the yeah I call those delineators uh, the the tall ones were we were going to take all those out but except I don't know about around the hospital I don't know if we've had that discussion with them <clears throat> we didn't I, I don't recall that taking up the white post in do you recall from our me I know the hospital has asked us to replace one or two when they've gotten knocked down. So yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what are your what are your feelings on that on those in those zones? Because we're just talking about a few of those. Is there an issue? That's a good, that was a good question or point she brought up earlier. Is there a problem when the ambulances are trying to turn from seventy one? No. I've not heard of any problem from the I've chief. Heard of, but I don't, you know, that's an issue. And that would that would have to do with whether they stop at the stop bar or I not. I don't think that has anything to do with the trail, though. No, not I don't think so. When the price that was just an intersection problem, not the trail problem. Mm -hmm. If people pull up too far when they stop, mm -hmm. yeah. The bar she was talking about is a normal stop bar that's on streets all over town. Yeah. Uh, when the project first went in, the radiuses were too sharp. Right. Uh, they were basically based on. 25 foot radius which was our normal street radius but it was right there by fire station one and ladder truck number one couldn't make the curve so we worked with the fire department to find out what would work we found out 40 feet would work for a ladder truck and we went through and pulled the posts and zebras out of those turn areas the same thing could be said down it we pulled up some of the zebras down near Thompson for the same reason it helped make the the turn easier right. but I haven't heard any other 
complaints about turn radiuses. Chief, you have anything to add? Do you, you, did you hear what we're planning? Taking the all the zebras up except in front of the school and in front of the hospital. We would like that. Yeah. <laughs> so would I. <laughs> so I have a question, Brad. There was uh, some reason during our discussions about markings on Don Tyson that it was decided not to put the reflectors on the street. I think because the street department didn't want them there when they have to clear uh, I don't know. I'll be off this. What? I don't know what that was. It was because uh, the snow plows would right. keep them out. So now we're talking about putting them on Holcomb and Maple anyway? Yeah. Don't we have the same problem? Well, you don't. Could if we don't usually plow we the don't usually plow bike those. lanes, but yeah. we don't yeah. what? We don't usually plow. We wouldn't plow the bike lanes. Oh, really? They're going to stop right at the bike lane. Yeah. In six feet, six inches of snow. Yeah. Come on, Brad. <clears throat> I think they could, <clears throat> but I but I don't know that. I don't know when's the last time we plowed. Well, when's the last time we plowed anything? But but uh, but I don't know if Maple gets plowed. Holcomb might. Holcomb would be more likely to. Mm -hmm. How many? How how far apart do you place the collectors? Do you know? I think they're eight to ten feet. That just like the zebras, they're spaced about eight to ten feet, I believe. I think in the picture that I showed you all, they're, they're set at a 10-foot increment. Yeah. Is, is, is that any standard, or is it just uh, just buzz or Just taking a zebra out and putting a reflector in its place. You could extend that out since they reflect very well mm -hmm. from a long distance. You could actually space them out and still show pretty good reflectivity down there. I think they would be spaced out lo further than Absolutely. than what the zebras are right now. It, it would be better to, if we do this, to space them out in a longer distance and then work your way back in instead of having to pull them up. So this was a way to have some extra measure of safety for people on the bike lanes without having the bumps. That's the bottom line, and I thought it was a good solution. Well, are you talking about safety during the dark or during the daytime? Well, they'll, I mean, you'll see them or you would feel them if, if they were in the dark. But if you needed to get over there, you could as long as nobody was in the bike lane. I mean, it just makes it a lot easier to navigate because you can drive right over them if you need to. These are mainly designed for night, but yeah, that's my, you'll, my you'll, feel them, uh, you'll feel them as you go over them. Right. They're not a big bump. You'll just, you'll right. just feel them. There's, there's a bike lane on east and west sides, correct? Yes. Yes. What would it hurt eliminating the bike lane on the west side of Holcomb? The east side, I can understand. If Lisa Academy likes it there, that looks like there's plenty of room for the number of bikes that would go down, and it would be much more beneficial to the citizens to have a little more street to drive on if the bike lanes were eliminated on the west side. Well, on Holcomb, they'll have plenty of room with bike lanes on both sides of the road. Well, and if you don't have a, I mean, one's, one's northbound and one's southbound. They can't go both ways on one? Too narrow. Well, if you go both ways on one, then you do That's need eight. protection because you, then you're going to have somebody riding their bike against traffic. And that was the recommendation by right. the trails people had said, you don't, you, that's, you just want to ride with the traffic whatever direction it's going. That was the purpose of lane. And, and they're not really wide enough for both directions. No, it'd have to be made wider. I have one other question, Chris, that I didn't think about until we were sitting here. The green planter boxes, whatever they're called, will they be, will they remain <laughs> or will Horse they troll. go far away? I think those were going to go away, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. So they will go we'll away. We'll keep the paint on the street. I understand that. Yeah. I just didn't know if the boxes were going to stay there, the troughs. One of the discussions has been, and I suspect we, we, would, we could try it temporarily, 
was to replace those. Have you seen the new planters on Emma? You could set a couple there. The problem is there's no irrigation, so somebody would have to water those. But I think we do. should just try paint for a while there. Okay. I would agree. You could still do reflectors if, yeah. if you needed to on that section. I'm, I'm thinking about on Meadow, if, if you're eastbound on Meadow at Holcomb where it comes out. Mm -hmm. That needs to be milled out. Yeah, yeah. Well, what do you think about us trying that? Well, the whole point of bringing it forward to right. this body is for information purposes so that when things begin to change and people begin to ask questions, everybody would have the answers. Okay. Right. That, so, so there's no really have, action, but we, the idea. Well, you're saying that the council doesn't have anything to do with it. Absolutely. We're just letting us know. Well, we didn't need to prepare a resolution to be no, approved or anything. We just we were hoping to just get your blessing on it and say let's try that and say because we're not we're not talking about uh, any substantial money, very very little money, and this this would be it would what's my pet peeve about the whole thing? I, I drive it every day, several times a day. Never hit an armadillo or a zebra. I'm fine with everything. What I don't like is the way it looks. I don't like the I don't like the wavy center line, and they're going to fix all that. And that's what. Uh, but I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to take the bike lanes away. We don't. There's room for the bike lanes. This will actually create more room with a reflector rather than those zebras set at a 45 degree angle. You're still going to have. You're going to have more driving room. And then if you need to get over with the reflectors there, it's easy to do. How many bikes actually use Holcomb? Hmm. How many bikes actually use Hawk? There are numbers coming forward that were yeah. given to us at the, at the meeting. I don't have those. I can tell you two. <laughs> <laughs> if, you've ever seen, if you've ever seen more than two or three, I'd like to see them. Yeah. So when we take those zebras up, what damage does it do to the asphalt? They're just bolted in. Just bolt, bolt them in. out and fill it with a <laughs> sealer. How much money are we talking about having to spend and revamping the bike lanes if we step to, to these recommendations? $2 per reflector. And so, and that's so we don't have to change any paint. That's not including. That's why the filling, recommendation but. is to leave the paint and continue to monitor, yeah. put reflectors in, in place of zebras. So, the, so when you take the zebras out, you don't have to fill it? Well, they're bolted down. Mm -hmm. So what you do is unbolt them and you'll put sealer in the holes. How much does that cost to put sealer in all of those? Sorry to interrupt, but there's, um, we need to speak into the microphones. It's not coming over the audio. Okay. I'm just asking about the cost. So what, what if it's $2 per reflector, um, the cost of maybe redoing the paint. You said that's that's not you're not redoing any of the lines, any of the paint. We'll do the we'll do the center line. The center line. Yeah. Okay. So how how much is is what's on here? Is that going to cost? I'm not sure. I I can bring you an estimate. We would do that anyway. It's already in our budget, so that's part of guys do striping all over town. Okay. So it's not an increased cost, it's just this is one of the places that we would put on our list. So how do we make it less ugly? Well, if you take the zebras out and you take right. the poles down, mm -hmm. you straighten the center there. line. What about the paint? I think that, uh, in my opinion. Which paint? Like, from the hospital, uh, all around the hospital, all of that, like, it, it's all awful. Good. Kind of the old paint that's been covered over. Well, that's what we're talking about grinding. That'll go away. When they did the project, they used black paint. We would grind it out. Right. So whose decision is this ultimately? Well, it could be ours. It could be. Happy with it, it could be yours. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious. I'm, I'm not necessarily, you know, anti-bike. I don't bike. I should bike. I'm not anti-bike. <laughs> and I don't think it's necessarily a negative um, for Springdale, but I also know that a 
huge majority, I hear it more than anything else from being on the council is about the bike lanes. And I really think we should consider, you know, what the residents are saying, what they're asking and, um, you know. I, I think know. we are by removing exactly. these zebras. See, the, the point of me is seriously is to do address exactly what you're talking about. It's a, an alternative transportation system. Mm -hmm. It's taken forever, but there are some changes that need to be made that, that, that we've all heard from the public regarding the zebras, the poles, the striping, all of that. So this minor adjustment might make it easier for the bikers and the people that travel mm -hmm. in cars and emergency services, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, how does this compare to like what you're seeing in Fayetteville? I know with over by um, this Rolling Hills. Square. This is real close to what they did it on Rolling Hills Drive. When I was just there this afternoon deliberately knowing that we we're mm -hmm. gonna have this discussion tonight, it is a much more attractive, it's clean. functional, clean. It's clean, it's not, it doesn't look like a. Yeah, it's easy to navigate that whether you're on a bike or in a car mm -hmm. or on foot. One, one thing I've noticed though on Rolling Hills is, uh, you see this picture that's in our packet, they don't have that striped area. Right. They just have, uh, and, and actually maple is that way too. Part of it has the stripes. Because it was narrower. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They had, and, and, and Fayetteville didn't use the zebras. They used something, it was shaped different. It was still just as objectionable, I think, to their residents. So they took that off and they did, I think they call them a rumble strip, but it's basically a series of reflectors. It's actually two of these reflectors with a bump in between that's laying crossways. So they have the same wide buffer zone. They're just doing it with reflectors and the strip in between. So would these reflectors need to go, would they need to go on the outside or, or toward the, the traffic side of the white line? You know, you've got that buffer with the, with the hashed stripes in it, mm -hmm. right? On, on the wider parts. Mm -hmm. Would the reflectors go closest to traffic or would they go in the middle of that buffer or would they go on the toward the back side of that buffer? the picture that you have in the packet is against traffic so if you hit the bump you've still got a foot before you get into the bike before line. you get into the biker yeah. and what about the colors like all that green and and all of that stuff that's that stays mm -hmm. yeah in fact what we need to do permanently when we can afford to do it or if we get a grant to do it we actually need to paint the whole bike lane so it would be and it, it, like a green, the whole, so it can be easier, more easily distinguished. I mean, I, that's something that's going to be decided regionally, or ne at least a color. We we all each city wants to settle on one color, so that uh, so that when people ride in different cities, they'll be used to they'll be seeing the same thing. But that's not what we're talking about doing right now. But I think ultimately that's what needs you to bet. happen. It's the first time I heard that. <laughs> yeah, I think ultimately that's what needs to happen, but we're not talking about that yet. We're just trying to, the Trails Committee, from all the time that has passed, the comments, trying to make our public right. feel safe, but have an, an alternative route and just make it look better. Still function. I, I just wanted to make a short comment on the reflectors. Uh, they'll, they'll, as Brad says, they'll be six or eight feet apart, but they're a rumble strip. Uh, they're there, and if if you're daydreaming in your car and hit it, it'll it'll you will notice it, and will move back into your lane. Um, it's it's like the rumble strips on the side of the interstate, uh, but not as severe. So that, that's the purpose of, of the reflectors. Besides at night being reflective, they are a uh, rumble. They, they would be a functioning as a rumble strip, but not, not a very obtrusive rumble strip. With the, with the zebras gone and the, most all the delineators gone, depending on what we do around the hospital and the school, people are going to feel like it's a much wider road than it feels like now. Well, and, and basically we're just we're just to see how this works. Yeah. And uh -huh. We're not spending a lot of money to see how this works, oh, and we're removing the we're removing the most objectionable part of this project. The other thing I was gonna, I mentioned that was in the memo is 
this project doesn't connect anything on the end on each end is why you didn't see as many by there was an increase in in cyclists but not what was expected because the maple street project hasn't been completed to connect to the greenway on one end and you couldn't put the bikeway across thompson because our dot doesn't have standards for that so the thought is if we put this in and watch it until we both of those two things occur right then we might be, see different. we you know this is uh, and the trails committee and you know th this is the f a future part of the pride of springdale trail yeah. which will go all the way out to harbor high school so yeah as as we hook up as we're able to move further west and connect more neighborhoods uh, it gives them a, a back connection to downtown will these reflectors be a self-stick item or are they a glued item that's down and the reason i'm asking that is if you put them on that stripe and you need to restripe then you got to remove them and stripe or you stripe over them you lose your reflectivity i would recommend we put them just on the inside that way if you had to restripe you don't have to remove those things on the inside yeah we're on this picture here they've got them sitting right in the middle of that stripe oh okay so if you just move them on the I'll see what you're saying. On the inside of it, you know, without the black trials, still the stripe. And where are they? Where? Where again? I'm sorry. Are we leaving the armadillos at? No, they're going. I think we said we were leaving. Leaving some. In front of the academy. Lisa. In front of the Lisa Academy and in front of the hospital. Okay. I don't know how long. How long? How I don't know how long an area. I don't know. I know in front of the hospital. That's a huge section of that street probably where the where the crosswalk all where all the crosswalks are at least that distance i'd say from the driveway closest to the hospital in their parking lot to the corner at the block i think is about what it is to maple drive yeah yeah the so area where the there's lots of traffic the... back and forth yeah lots of traffic moving between the hospital and, and you said hospital administration said this is something they that they, they love they've it. contacted you chris yes they did uh, uh, Hans is in Rotary. Oh, yes. Yeah, I've talked with Hans as well. And he, after it was put in, he said he, he loved it and his people loved it because it, <clears throat> excuse me, had calmed the traffic through there. They felt a lot safer. Okay. They park, uh, yeah, they park across the street and use those crosswalks. So when you restripe, will all of the ugliness go away? Like all of the old <clears throat> stuff? I'm sorry, I'm so yes. stuck on that. It's so ugly. You have a painted center line. Yes. At, that went in with the, the, the trails. And on either side, it used to be three lanes. Mm -hmm. And that, those were painted black, and now that's, the black is faded. Those will be ground out. So you'll have okay. a center line. Brand new, pretty center line. Okay. <laughs> it won't, I, Amelia. I don't want to. It, it's not going to look beautiful until someday down the road when Holcomb and Maple are milled and re and and new asphalt put on, and that'll happen eventually. It does with all streets. Well, that's concrete. Some of Maple's concrete, so that yeah, that that one section of Maple wouldn't be wouldn't be milled. And all the white poles will be gone. The, what? the white poles. Right. The flex the we can take them all out the hospital in those terms i don't know what they think about those but usually you use those to help like you see them at people's driveways they put the little reflectors right. so you know don't drive off in the ditch that's basically what those are for and then we may need to keep a couple of them at some driveways okay but, in general, but not all the ones at the on the corners no and all of that no, That'll those, just be designated by away. paint lines, right? Let us do it, and then y'all then y'all come back and tell us what you think. And if we need to do something else, we can do something else. How's that? Yeah, I'm fine yeah. with that, but I would like to know what Thank the cost is. So just let me know, Brad. We had talked about Thank that you. in the meeting, and it was we'll get it right. It was <laughs> minimal. All right, Rick. Back to you. Okay. That's all we've got in finish out piece. So we'll move on to item nine. And I think uh, Brian handled that. Yeah, Brian took this. You want to take All it right. tonight, Brian? You bet. We met last Monday, and uh, we have a resolution on the table. We met in executive session. 
considering um, eight applicants. And uh, we came out of the session with a resolution to appoint Jim Reed to the unexpired <coughs> term of the Office of City of Springdale. One mile. Uh, Springdale City Council Ward 1, Position 2, pursuant Arkansas Code, annotate 14-43-411. And it was forwarded from the committee with the recommendation for approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Jim's here if you have any questions. If not, does anybody else have any comments or questions? All right. Finish. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Powell? Yes. Jacobs? Yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. <laughs> Overton? Yes. You know, you got to sit by him now. <laughs> Carry 7 0. <laughs> All right, thank you, Jim. Thanks for your willingness to do this for till the end of the year. Appreciate it very much. Got anything you want to say, real quick? Beat the storm. The uh, first of all, I'm glad to be able to do this. Thanks for letting me have the chance to give back to the city because that's what I'm doing it for. Yeah, yeah thanks, Jim. And I'm going to remind everybody again our appreciation to all those who. Uh, who put their names in for that for that position hope hope several of them decide to run uh, because they had a had a lot of good qualified people so thanks again jim item 10 police and fire committee brian powell brian thank you mayor um we met also met last monday and uh, with the resolution adopting the department manual for the springfield police department pursuant arkansas code annotate 14-51-302 and repealing and replacing all prior resolutions pertaining thereto. Resolution forwarded to the committee with recommendation for approval. Will the resolution be adopted? Second. Okay, got a motion and a second. Any further comment or questions? I see, I, I see we have a, uh, a uh, civil service commissioner on, via Zoom. Bob, did you need to say anything on this? Bob dropped off. Okay, Bob won't. <laughs> And we won't be here so from Bob. We'll be here from Bob. Oh, no. <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> okay. Chief, you got anything else you need to add before we vote? Not unless anyone has any questions. All right. Hearing none. Uh, roll call. Evans. Yes, ma'am. Al. Yes. Jay Cox. Yes. Williams. Yes. Watson. Yes. Overton. Yes. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Carry 7-0. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Public Vehicle Commission, Chairman Kathy Cox. <laughs> Kathy J. Cox. I'm John sorry, Kathy. <laughs> Y'all take it easy on me. I told somebody this morning, this is the first day in a month that I've had to wear a belt. And so, uh, a belt? I'm just, uh, I've been uncomfortable all day. <laughs> so, uh, I'm serious. I think this, uh, I think this uh, COVID deal, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna start a social media group, uh, call it Men for Moo Moos. I would love, <laughs> To be able to wear one of those every day, but anyway, I digress. Uh, Kathy, it's all your great introduction. <laughs> yeah, get that image out of your head. <laughs> okay, we're going to begin with a public hearing. Uh, uh, we just this is a public hearing. I'm, yes, Mr. Mike, would you begin, please? Thank you. <clears throat> with any comments you might have. Hello again. Um, I guess I'm kind of responsible for some of this. Um, Joe Washington with NWA Taxi, and it's going to be all I can do not say NWA Wrecker. NWA Taxi uh, contacted me on the 16th, I believe, um, asking about how to get paid for the vouchers, the invoices for the vouchers that he has submitted since January. Uh, at that time, I told him. Uh, the city cannot pay you for those invoices because you were not permitted since uh, the end of the year last year. Um, he expressed that he did want to go ahead and come through, apply again, and try to be reinstated and re-permitted. Um, I told him if he would do that, I would likely support him in doing that. I've worked with him since I went into the service division, I think in 2015. Um, he, I've had zero complaints on him. He, he and I have never had any kind of issues. He's always cooperative and polite and professional. The only issue that I have with him and some others is that he just will not permit in time. He, he um, 
at the end of the year, usually it will go into February, March, April before he does the re-permitting process, which is kind of inconvenient for the people that use taxi services. Um, anyways, should he be able to meet the requirements of the ordinance? I have no issue with him being uh, re, uh, re-permitted. So the permitting process is, goes to the end of this year, the calendar year? It goes to the end of the calendar year. And they are supposed to, I believe by ordinance, supposed to start um, the reapplication, or not the reapplication, uh, re-upping the permit, I believe in October of the previous year. And I use, I sent out, in fact, this year, I sent out a, a letter to all the, ta the both taxi companies, October 2nd, reminding them, hey, let's get this process started. Never heard a word from either one of them. But yes, it's a calendar year. Mike, do I understand you to say that the vouchers you support going back and paying those? At if he is able to be re-permitted and he meets the requirements, I would, I would does, be, I would support him being. Yeah. Does it make sense that if he's a continue to trouble to permit on time, to not go back and pay him? Therefore, he might get the, permitted on time. That would likely? be something to consider. Um, kind of what we have done, or what I have tried to do, is just kind of progressive. We we made it each year. We made it a little bit more difficult to this year saying you have to reapply if you didn't do it this is the first year we've done that my, my thought is just if there's no reason to permit if you're going to just turn around and get paid for what you didn't get permitted on time so i kind of i'm all in favor of having competition and having taxis but i'm not in favor of going back and paying him if he's just a compete, uh, repeat offender and not getting permitted i think by doing that he needs to get permitted on time just like everybody else and there'll be no trouble and he'll get paid that's just my thoughts. That's a good point. I, I agree with you, Mike, on that. Can that be done, Ernest? Well, what, what's happened, what, what Sergeant Bell referred to was we, we had a couple of taxi companies that it seemed like every year we were on them. You need to renew, you need to renew, you, you need to renew. And it would always come down to January or February when they submitted their first invoices for the reimbursement for the vouchers that we would tell them, we will hold those hostage until they renewed their permit. This year, we're making uh, NWA Taxi come back and start over because of that, because we've tried this before, where it takes them several months. We have another one who has actually been cited into court. Did we cite he NWA was cited. last year as well? Yes. We actually, last year, we actually cited them into court before they came into compliance. This year, uh, one of them's been cited into court, and the other one is now it still hasn't re-permitted. And NWA were making them start completely over. Instead of just re renewing what they should have done by the end of the year, we're making them start over like a new taxi company. I think to Mike's point, oh, I'm sorry, you were okay. gonna say, you were oh. probably gonna say the same thing I was, but go ahead. No, <laughs> I just, my, my question was, if I understand you right, you say that in the past you've gone back and paid these people retroactively? Once they came into compliance. Once they came in, but is there anything in the ordinance that allows you to do that? Well, we did it because they were. Is there anything in the ordinance that allows you to do there's that? There's anything. There's not anything that says there there isn't. So we wouldn't so, have to make a change if we were to say, right. just make a policy change and say, right. if you don't you don't get paid for vouchers, if for the time for any time that you're out of compliance. If I you're guess, not if you're not in compliance, why should you get paid? I guess well, I agree. by analogy, it's like someone who has a business license and all the business licenses expire at a certain time every year and they may take a month to get it renewed after technically they've expired and we work with them in getting, letting their business continue as long as they're working on getting their business license renewed. So it's kind of, kind of analogous to that. I take Mr. Lawson's point as well as say he shouldn't be reinstated just to get paid for his voucher. He should have to comply with all the aspects of the ordinance going forward is the way I understand it. And I agree with that. Can we make, can we just in fact, make I think, that change without? I think, I think the, the recommendation, I don't want to put words in Sergeant Bell's mouth, but I think the recommendation that he, when we spoke about this previously, was that he was going to make the recommendation that if NWA taxi is approved, that they be put on the time clock to be in compliance by a certain date. But, yes. but I, I yes. guess that doesn't answer the question, though, about <clears throat> any vouchers 
that that's a decision that between between the their between when they start or when they're approved and when they actually come into compliance that's, that's up to the, the council's full purview to be able to determine that because we're responsible for the finances of the city so we could determine if we want to do that or not period I can, I can tell you that's how it's been done in years past because they've come into compliance i understand how it's been so, done but it, that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, we have to abide by that that's right somebody to stay in compliance in order to be reimbursed once you're out of compliance until you get in compliance you're waiving everything yep how would that need to be how do we need to codify that Ernest I don't think I don't believe that you would have to uh, I think that that it's it's clear from from our ordinance that as of December 31st NWA taxi was not in compliance and if they get a permit say they comply by if you agree to give them a new permit and they comply by May 1st from January 1st to May 1st they technically had no technically nope. had no permit that's right so I don't think you'd have to change anything I just think in, in years past I think it was just the city working with these companies to get them in right. compliance is what it was and we didn't want to punish the people who are using these vouchers either. so how often are these vouchers paid how often are these vouchers submitted and paid? Is it a lump sum at the end of the year? Or is it monthly? Yeah, it's monthly. I'm sorry. Once a month. I didn't. I didn't hear. Once a month. Once a month. Do the taxi services uh, enter into any kind of a contract with the city to get paid on the vouchers? Um, I don't believe so. It's through the CDBG program. It's just kind of a something that we. We say we'll pay you, but there's no real contract. Money's administered through the CDBG, and then uh, that's always in part of the CDBG budget. But when and administered by the administration. I think the reason we worked with them in the past is we didn't want to punish the people who are using those vouchers either, and not not be able to get get right. So. But they also have uh, can use the ORT. That's right. Well, it's a little different for some people. I understand. Well, I'll, I'll do that however y'all want to do it. Is there a way to go ahead and do it as they've been told that it would be done this time and then start next time and say, so you guys are aware? I happen to agree with we you. We can't, you know, it's hard to go back on something that, especially if that's the way it's always been done um, and we're in the process of doing that, to, to go back on that. Not that we can't, but it's it just makes it, a whole lot more difficult than saying this is it this is the last time starting next year yep then then you're you're out that money you're not in compliance by that's December right. 31st we will retroactively go back and, that's right and I think that's a really good idea balance we can sure do that I don't I, I agree with that thank you Sergeant Bill thank y'all Mr. Washington. Mr. Washington, this is a public hearing. Would you would NWA have anything to say to this body? Did you I, hear did you hear any of the conversation that I heard we were having the, in here? I, I think you guys were talking about the past um, coupons. Is that what we were talking about? Yeah. The the vouchers that okay. you took so, while Yeah, so let me let, let me compliance. say first sorry, my, I'm Joe Washington, I own NWA Taxi and I'm Thank y'all for listening. So, guys, um, really and truly, the the the, um, the vouchers are not that big of a deal uh, to me because I didn't I don't I don't think, I didn't win it I didn't go into it to pick these people up to take them to the doctor to take them to Walmart thinking I got to get paid. You know, I I got cross. Somebody else normally handles my paying my stuff and stuff like that. We had to downsize tremendously. You know, you go from 18 vehicles down to two vehicles. Mm -hmm. You had to downsize. So I never, I'm, I'm at the point where you guys didn't say, I, my, my license expired. So you guys didn't say, keep coming here, Joe, and keep doing it. I, didn't, I wasn't ever thinking like that. I was just thinking they were calling. I was going to get them. They were trapped outside. I was going to get them. I wasn't thinking like, oh, they're going to pay me. They're going to pay me. 
So if you guys said today, Joe, we, we can't honor that because you wasn't, it's fair. I, I'm not that guy. I, I do a lot of stuff out of the goodness of my heart. I really, really do. And if you guys say, Joe, I, I, you, you can't be here, it's fair. But I'm just saying, you guys don't have to spend a whole lot of time worrying about, oh, we, do we have to pay that guy or don't we have to pay that guy? Well, I, I want to, you know, if, I, if you guys allow me to be reinstated, this will, this will not happen again. You won't have this conversation again. You won't have to worry about, should we pay him his money, should we not? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with you guys saying, Joe, you wasn't in compliance. Well, I wasn't. Okay. Mr. Washington, I think the point of this is to make sure that you're in compliance. Absolutely. At the end Absolutely. of this year and that when that permit Absolutely. expires, that you clearly understand and I any agree. other company. I agree. That at that point, that's where the problem yes, begins. Because that's where it begins. These are, these are people that are vulnerable and they need your service. Absolutely. And the city wants the service. Absolutely. But we need compliance. Yes, ma'am. I agree. That totally. was the point of, I think, the conversation. Yes, so okay. incentivizing companies is what these uh, good people were talking about. Yes, ma'am. Are there any other questions for Mr. Washington? Thank you, sir. Are there any other? Anybody else would like to speak? Okay. Then we're going to. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought they were together. Good evening. I'm Kenneth Morton. I'm an attorney in Fayetteville. I um, have represented and known Mr. Washington for 15 or 20 years. And certainly. Uh, there's no justification for the fact that he got out of compliance. And, of course, I've handled most of this stuff, and for some reason it didn't get to me or I had to make sure that it was taken care of. And um, certainly I think that I'm the first to say that you've got to be in compliance and you've got to do things that's right. And certainly I want him to, and I wish I'd known it sooner because we'd have made it right and I'd like for you all to understand that I've told Mr. Washington and of course he's in other cities too that please keep me informed and I will follow up on it because like I say I've known him for a long long time I met him when he was a ramp supervisor at Northwest Regional and he took care of me mm. and I, I want to try to take care of him and certainly uh, I've been around, I've been practicing here 45 years, and I know you got to do the things to renew, and I wish you had contacted me. But unfortunately, because of some situations he is in with his cars and finance, um, he didn't pay as close attention as he should. And I would re request that you all consider reinstating, and I'll take a more active role to oversee him so that this doesn't happen again. Thank, Thank you. you sir. Anybody else? Oh, dear. Good evening. Oh, I'd just like to speak up for uh, the applicant this evening. Sir, uh, would you introduce yourself? Your name? Yeah, Kyle Limsall, Payless Taxi, LLC. Thank you. I was here a couple weeks ago. I was the one that got denied. Uh, anyway. I didn't come here to destroy anybody. Uh, I didn't come here to, you know, to, to lie about anybody, slander anybody. I just come here to speak the truth. And uh, I fear nothing when I say this today. Uh, Mr. Washington runs a legit business. Uh, he has provided service to Northwest Arkansas for many years. It's been legit, reliable, trustworthy. And uh, I don't see any reason why this man should not be renewed in his permits. And I would definitely, as a as another uh, certificate holder in Fayetteville, like to work with him, and uh, and keep the community going with the taxis getting along and helping one another rather than destroying one another. Uh, I think that's what brings the community together. It's when we work together. We don't try to destroy one another. We try to, you know, get our economy to where it's profitable for both. And uh, I just want to give my endorsement. And I think you guys should should definitely. Uh, approval thank you thank, thank you Kyle. sir and thank you for your time good evening ladies and gentlemen council members mr. mayor 
uh, Stu Lerby Fable Taxi. Um, unfortunately, I know a little more of the history of what's gone on with this and comments that have been said, and oh, we just missed uh, taking care of only Springdale is not the issue. It goes much deeper than that. Um, there are issues that go back prior to Uber with the manner and method of which both NWA and pr prior dynasty and current hog taxi were running using subcontractors for everything. It's not legal. You can't cross county lines almost without any exception. You can't go out of state. Um, the application, which I have not, I guess there isn't one, uh, only shows NWA taxi, does not show HET hotel executive transportation, which has state authority. These are two separate entities. Uh, the airport brought this up two years ago when me and Mr. Washington were trying to get into the airport and he would refuse to clarify it or fix the problem. That was one of the items that the airport keyed in on, on denying entry inside to have a booth inside the airport was the fact that he did not have authority, state authority on NWA taxi. Um, they all know that this is a requirement. They had federal, full federal DOT authority before. You need that if you're going to go out of state and pick somebody up and bring them back. That was canceled. This is online on federal website, and they reduced themselves to only state authority. Yet they've gone outside more times than I can say, and they've taken people out of state, left them out there, and I've had to go get them, bail them out, and bring them back into the state of Arkansas. Um, Sir, I pre we appreciate your comments. Yes, ma'am. But according to the Secretary of State, this company is in good standing. Well, when you say that, that as far as just for a corporate status, that but is we're not. We're addressing Springdale's service tonight, permitting yeah. their service in the city of Springdale. Okay, and with with that, the vehicles being located in Rogers cannot be brought down to Springdale without state authority and without an employee behind the wheel. You cannot cross county lines like that unless it is an employee. You cannot subrogate the requirement of state authority to cross county lines with the sole exception of a bona fide taxi company for a city that resides in two counties. That caveat is specifically carved out only for this city. If this city has a taxi service, it may cross between its county lines without needing state authority. You cannot be in another part of the state and cross county lines with subcontractors they have to be employees. If you're running a van, they have to be employees. You cannot use anything more than a sedan in a subcontract model when the subcontract model is whole and legal. You cannot take a subcontractor, an alleged subcontractor, and it would be ruled as a statutory employee from Rogers and bring them down to Fayetteville or Springdale to do taxi runs. That is not legal. It requires authority. You cannot subrogate the authority. Ernest, as a city attorney, could you speak to any of this for us who don't know this law? I, I don't know this law, but I can tell you our ordinance says that the taxi cab operating company can't be sold, assigned, transferred, leased, or mortgaged without the approval of public vehicle commission. I'm sure Mr. Washington is aware. I'm sure Mr. Washington, having had a previous permit here and been permitted by the city of Springdale before, is, is acutely aware of what the requirements are. And I'd and there's also a provision in our ordinance that says if there are any complaints or any violations that this permit can be taken away. I don't know anything about any state requirements. So to your that. knowledge, then, uh, Mr. Uh, Washington is fully aware of all of, of our, all the ramifications of our ordinance and uh, in the past has complied. Is that correct? I've not, I've not been aware of any complaints against Mr. Washington's company when he was properly permitted by the city. Thank you. I, I would have to stress the comment, and, and I object to it, because, again, we're handing out federal monies to subcontractors. The, You're referring to the value accounts. Correct. Now, any, it's not like the driver approaches the city, let, let's use it in New York as an example, to get a <clears> hack <throat> permit where there are regulations that they are signing and agreeing to to be a cab driver, then they can take that actual taxi driver permit and go find a company to get a vehicle from and be a driver. This process, the way it works with here, Fayetteville, it, the city provides the applications 
to the company the company has to get the driver permitted through them it's it's it it, it is set up whoever set this up a long time ago set it up correctly because they have to be employees unless you have rules and, and ordinances for the drivers that they're agreeing to follow then they're they're not subcontractors they're not independent this whole thing with uber is falling apart all over the country one example california last year ruled all uber drivers as employees it has merit here because everybody trying to say that the drivers are subcontractors is a falsehood several states have filed almost probably two three billion dollars worth of lawsuits against uber for back wages they're not buying it no one's buying it and we appreciate that information and Russ, somebody else has something. We appreciate the information and your time. Okay, I do have more comments, but if you're, if I you're you saying need, I'm done, I think it's I, time to land the plane. I was going to yeah. say I think you were very clear when we heard from you a few weeks, a couple weeks ago. Thank you. And I appreciate. I think this commission appreciate and this council. Thank you. Thank you. Are there? Is there anybody else? Okay, then this public hearing is closed. I do not have the resolution. So <clears throat> there's a resolution on our agenda, but Mike. Okay. Sorry, Mike's upstairs. Uh, we have a resolution before us now for a resolution approving an application for a taxi cab operator permit filed by Joe Washington on behalf of NWA Taxi LLC. May the resolution be adopted. Second. Okay, we have a motion second. Any further comments or questions? Anyone? All right, Denise. Al. Yes. Jay Cox? Yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Carry 7 0. All right. Thank you. Any comments from our uh, council members? City attorney? No, sir. Nothing from me? So moved. Got a motion to adjourn? We're adjourned. Thank you. Everybody be safe. Second. I think we got out before the storm started. We'll address that in a bit.